On today's show, the guys talk with Dr. Sonny Magania. Do, 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 do. Magania. Manamana? Magania. Oh. <sighs> we also have an East Initiative update and more. That's up next on EduTech Guys. Manamana. EduTech Guys Radio. Radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on the site of this program for those who participants are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency. Hello and welcome to EduTech Guys Radio. I'm David Henderson. <laughs> and I'm Jeff Manitok. <laughs> it's going to be a Muppet kind of day, evidently. <laughs> Oh, hope you guys out there are doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in to Edutech Guys Radio. Yep, it's the summertime and we're having a blast here, we as are. you can tell. Yes, that's right. <laughs> having a good time. Yep, I think there's a gas leak in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure. I don't know. I was trying to spray paint my face earlier, and that could be what the problem is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. It's all the it's all the markers that we have stacked up. You know, yeah, the, was, all the t- all the teachers brought their markers yeah. <laughs> in and left all the caps. Yeah, off. Yeah, we had to change the caps all out. <laughs> yeah, and right. the little smelly kind, so you had to smell the markers. Marker and then put the right cap on yes, top of it. Yes, that's right. And we were paint, we were spray painting bookshelves for next year, and you know, it, mine was broken and it just with no tubs just shooting everywhere. So I'm breathing in. Yeah, you know, that's that's our excuse. We're going to stick to it. That's it. Yeah, we hope you're having a good time out there. Oh, um, some my. of you are just now getting around to packing up your class and getting ready for yeah. um, to, to head home for the summer on vacation and go to PD and conferences and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Yep. That's going to be awesome. Hey, it's deep. Oh, there we, oh, it's time to take my medicine. Oh. So, <laughs> Way past time for that. Every 15 minutes. Oh. So, <laughs> it's shock therapy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's part of the new the new Apple release. <laughs> That's Yeah. It's the new app called Shock Therapy. It's part of the health thing they're doing. Yeah, it is. It's attached right. to your That's watch. Right. That's, that's part of the uh, the the uh, anti addiction yeah. thing. Yeah, it but, comes with a tongue thing you put in your mouth protector so you can bite down on it and then it just shocks the living hoo hoo out of you. <laughs> it's good stuff. Oh, uh, <laughs> you got to leave it to the folks at Apple. <laughs> hey, I'm in the heart study and the uh, you know electroshock therapy study. It's wonderful. <laughs> It's awfully weird, though, because the, the shock therapy stopped my heart. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> then it kicks back in, and then it still restarts my oh, heart. Oh, it's beta. Hey, check us out on the web, www.edutechguys.com, or you, you can go to Twitter and look us up. Hey, just go to Google, type in Edutech Guys, and you're going to find us. So that's how you can get in touch with us. Lots of places. Reach out. Tell us what you think of the show, what you'd like us to do within reason. Yeah, okay. Let's not get crazy. Yeah, because, you know. I don't know, though. We, we can get pretty crazy, so. I know, but people can get awfully mean. Oh, okay, well, that's true. My feelings get hurt pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be a great show today. We got uh, Dr. Sonny Magana on the show. And, yeah. Uh, I hope he's he finds it. It's funny. We were goofing around at the front with the, with the Muppets because, you know, that's. Uh, I, I have the last name Madlock. Trust me, I've heard them all. Yeah, so, there you go. Yeah, you know, my, my, my daughter's name is Parker Madlock, and they call her Marker Padlock. So, you know, that's that's what happens. My name's Jeff Madlock, and they call me, hey, you fatty, fat ginger. They say all those kind of things to me. So I'll, I'll answer to most of it. He's stupid. Ah, you know. <laughs> well, this show took a certain uh, left turn at Albuquerque. That's a summertime show. We're having a good time. Ah, uh, having a great time. And speaking of great times, uh, here in a couple of weeks, we're going to be at ISTE, and we're not uh, broadcasting live, although um, from the sounds of things, uh, we do... Uh, have some potential uh, interviews lined up, so uh, we will have a microphone in hand and uh, sit down and chat with some folks. But uh, we're going to be the two guys running around with the EduTech Guy shirts, throwing EduTech Guy's business cards around everywhere. Is that what we're going to be doing? Yeah. It's going to be like confetti. It's going to be like a ticker tape parade. I'm glad you said business cards, because I have been collecting rocks for like two weeks now. (laughs) Sorry. You didn't get the memo. I didn't get the memo. (laughs) Now, they all were going to have a magic marker that said, EduTech guys, we rock. I didn't know. You know? So, <laughs> well, uh, it, it turns out that that trying to load up a bunch of rocks onto the airplane is frowned upon by the TSA. Think, is it? Would the TSA stop me with a bag of rocks? I guess who's going to find out? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have that on a future show. Get your camera ready <laughs> from cell three twenty two. Now, exactly why did you have to go in there and strip down? It was a bag of rocks, and it was crazy. <laughs> I just did not expect that at all. Bag of rocks. Hey, listen. We're going to take a quick break, hit a commercial or two, and we'll be right back with an interview with Dr. Sonny Magana. Thanks for listening to EduTech Guys. Reach out to us on Twitter, at EduTech Guys. Head over to Facebook, facebook.com slash EduTech Guys. 
or cruise on over to the website, www.edutechguys.com. Hey, welcome to the Edutech Guys. We're really glad to have our next guest on the show. Yeah. Um, we met him at FETC 2018. Um, his book is wonderful. His ideas are transformational. And we're going to let him introduce himself and tell us who he is and all that kind of good stuff. Well, thanks very much for having me on the show, Jeff and Dave. Uh, my name is Sonny Magania. Uh, I'm a simple teacher. I've been a teacher for 35 years. Uh, I started teaching biology. I'm a scientist uh, by training, uh, and I'm also a musician. So I've always found interesting ways to incorporate music and arts in my science lessons, uh, starting first as an AP biology teacher in New Jersey, where I'm from. And then I also got interested in technology in 1983 as a teacher. It was my first year of teaching. And so I've been really interested in the harmonious interaction of three things, science, music, and technology. And that's been a driving uh, force in my life of finding connections, the nexus between artistry and expression, um, actual evidence-based sciences, and new technology tools that allow us to do things that are not possible in the absence of those tools. And that's been the driving force of my, my work and my uh, research and my consultancy. And I'm just really delighted to talk with you. So thank you very much for the bottom of my heart for having me on. Oh well, uh, we thank you very much for uh, agreeing to to join us after we after we spent some time with you up at FETC. Uh, there just there wasn't enough time to talk about all of it, and so you know. And again, I realize time is always a it's thing, always but been, still, yeah. uh, you know, to yeah. be able to uh, come and share and, and dig deeper into uh, yeah. your research, and I, I, I'm just going to say I. I don't know what the word is I'm going to use. I find it funny, not funny, haha, necessarily, but interesting that you choose to call yourself a, you know, that you say you're a simple teacher because the the concepts and the research that you have done, in, in, or I should say the research you've done in the concepts uh, and, and the findings that have come out of that research have really, hopefully, have the impact to, to potentially change the way education technology is truly incorporated in classrooms. Yep. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about, and, and it already has. It's already made its mark. It's got all of those folks that came before that have, do, have, have run the data <laughs> and now go, oh, that's what I was trying to, to create. What's, he's done it, and he's put it in. So let's talk about disruptive classroom technologies, your framework for innovation in education. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm I'm grateful. Uh, the um, the funny thing is, and and funny not haha, but <laughs> <laughs> coincidental. Yeah, but <laughs> coincidental in a fascinating way is that oftentimes um, huge changes start from small beginnings, mm -hmm. and those small beginnings uh, are often have often been in the course of human history uh, been promulgated by. Um, humble people with simple ideas to make the world a better pay, place. Uh, and to, to, I, I think that uh, that is really what was driving me as a teacher. That's why I went into education. I want to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And I found my a voice and a niche to do that by leveraging research on modern pedagogy. And what I found in the 35 years that I've been studying the wicked problem of educational technology. I'll, I'll, let me rephrase that. The wicked problem of low impact mm, okay. educational technology use. That is a wicked problem. Mm -hmm. It's multifaceted. It's very complex. There are a lot of moving parts. It's difficult to define. And it is as yet unresolved. That mattered to me 35 years ago and ignited my, what I call my, my passion pilot light. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and when uh, every, everyone has it. Everyone has a passion pilot light. When one's passion pilot light is lit, it'll never go out. Mm -hmm. And I was just lucky to have some remarkable mentors in my career that lit my passion pilot light for exploring the nexus between modern pedagogies and modern technologies um, so that way we can uh, learn what we know and what we don't know mm -hmm. and build upon rather than replace our existing understanding of pedagogy. Uh, you know, I'm in favor in my book, Disruptive Classroom Technologies, which are very kind to, to mention. Um, what I'm really um, working to explore is a critical expansion of our our epistemology 
for pedagogy in this modern world. It doesn't mean we have to throw things out. I know there are a lot of people that are that are you know going around the world saying education is broken. We have to re-engineer it. We have to totally dismantle it and destroy it and build the new. And frankly, I think that's sort of self-defeating uh, because it's also it dishonors the uh, legacy of extraordinary philosophers, educators, um, theorists, practitioners, researchers that have built a, a foundation of a, a solid foundation of learning sciences and what we know about what works. Um, to dismantle that seems silly to me. I'd rather we expand it. We don't just we don't chuck the baby out with the bathwater, right. but maybe we design a new bathtub. <laughs> right. You know, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that's really what I'm trying to do is, is just a critical expansion of what we mean by um, uh, pedagogy in this third millennium, where we now have tool sets that allow teachers and students to do things that are impossible to do or exceedingly difficult to do in the absence of those technologies. And that's the nature of, of, of that work, disruptive classroom technology. I want to disrupt the narrative. Uh, of low and the story of low impact technology. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so for for those folks that uh, you, you're you've referenced low impact technology several times, um, so describe what that looks like, feels like, sounds like mm-hmm. for the folks that are listening that are like, well, what's he mean by low impact technology? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for saying that. The um, I define low impact technology as technologies that has. Um, uh, less than desirable impact on student achievement. So if it's low, the impact is going to be um, uh, meager, a dismal impact on uh, st- actual student achievement as measured by um, research on achievement scores by students. Okay. So uh, one of my mentors is Professor John Hattie, um, mm-hmm. who very kindly reviewed my book and reviewed some recent work that, I, that I'm working on. It's almost it's remarkable to be able to say his yes. name, and, you know, and say that I'm working with him because it's like, you know, I'm I'm taking guitar lessons from Eddie Van Halen. Right? Yeah, right. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. For, for those for those folks who who don't, don't know, know the correlation, yeah, that's, that's, that's that was that's a, a perfect, perfect correlation. Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Eddie, how do you do that thing? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. When you when you change the A key, what do you do? Yeah. So that's that's what I'm doing with with Hattie is aligning my research, my 35 years of research with with his you know, um, uh, extraordinary um, foundation of research, his meta-analysis. And he's a meta-analyst. He, he does meta-analyses, which is an analysis of multiple studies. Right. And here's what he found. Um, he, he developed a concept called effect size, which is a single number, and it tells you the confidence level of a particular strategy or influence on learning. And the impact that will have on student achievement. So he uses a scale of zero to one point zero. Now you can you know, put any um, uh, equivalent scale to that, but let's just use you know zero point one, point two, point three, et cetera. Sure. Of all the the influences that he studied, the average impact is point four. Mm-hmm. So if you can think of an odometer with a needle at, at point four, mm-hmm. that's the average impact okay. of all the hundred and seventy influences on on learning that he studied, including preterm birth weight. Um, mobility, poverty, mm. teacher methodologies, Piagetian methods, um, uh, student self-appraisal, feedback, all these influences, the average is 0.4. Okay. So if that's the average, think about that as the tipping point. Anything above that tipping point is good. Mm-hmm. It'll have a, a, an impact. So the average of 0.4, another way of saying that is that's the average amount of learning an average learner will attain in an average academic year. Okay. So that's the midpoint. That's the midpoint. Okay. Anything above that, 0. 0.44, 0. 0.45, 0. 0.5, clearly those are what he calls the zone of desired impact. Mm-hmm. When he studied over 10,000 analyses, analyses on the impact of technology, he found that the average impact of technology is well below that average of 0. 0.4. It's 0. 0.3, 0. 0.34 to be precise. That's well below the average. And what's worse is that that impact hasn't changed in 50 years, which is staggering. So yeah. you think about the, yeah, it's staggering. Think about the, the um, evolution of educational technologies since the Johnson administration. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, so now we're in a world where we have bring your own devices and 
Uh, kids have uh, really extremely powerful tools that that are in their pockets or pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. And yet the average impact of those tools is 0.34. Now there's a range, there's a, there's a range, but the average is 0.34. Sure. And the question is why, why is it so low? And I think I've kind of cracked that question. And the reason is that we have a dominant, um, uh, pedagogical model that privileges surface learning, mm -hmm. just learning the basic facts, mm -hmm. maybe going a little bit deeper, but practicing those facts. And it's called the tell and practice model of teaching, where the teacher tells the kid what knowledge is, what knowledge is important to learn, what knowledge is important to memorize. Mm -hmm. The successful kids dutifully memorize that, they practice it, and then spit it back out on some assessment form. Right. The ones who are successful don't forget what they memorized until after the test. Right. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now you add technology to that tell and practice model, and all you're doing is in my language, that's translation. You're translating teaching and learning tasks from an analog environment using an overhead projector or a blackboard or a whiteboard or um, uh, textbooks. You're converting those analog forms into a digital form where now you have digitized tell and practice. Sure. So students are now consuming information digitally or their uh, teachers are automating instructional tasks. Mm -hmm. You essentially are just bolting technology on top of a tell and practice model. You, now it becomes a little more obvious why the impact of technology is so low. Would you, would you agree? Right. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I want to I want to I want to bring up two different thing, two different uh, pieces or, or questions or points, whatever <laughs> um, that that you that you hit upon. One um, is the uh, when you're talking about that average being the the point three four. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. I know there's some above and some below and all that kind of good mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so the the first thing that I like would like to know is um, you're talking about how that hasn't changed over the last 50 years. So are there studies that have concentrated more, you know, technology has changed a lot in 50 yeah. years. So are, are there parts of that study or are there current studies being done that focuses more on the, the more recent end of that spectrum? And then Along the same lines, when you're talking about that 0.34, I'm assuming that's across K-12. It is. So in that regard, um, when you look at, generally speaking, when you look at the lower grades, there's much more of that sit and get, you know, you know, got, got to tell type learning versus the upper grades where the students have the background knowledge for a lot of the pieces, not all the pieces, but a lot of the pieces, and 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 again, recently there has been a shift away from that sit and get. More of the teacher is not the sage on the stage, but more of the facilitator for helping those students learn. So, have you seen or are there studies on the impact in those regards? You know, lower grade levels versus upper grade levels. Um, the short answer is yes. Uh, the recent meta-analysis that John has done, and he's constantly adding studies to his meta-analysis and constantly refining that average, but it's still holding pretty steady at 0.34. So that's the short answer. Let me give you a, the medium answer, okay. which is uh, in, the, uh, in the lower grades, um, you'd be surprised how much of that is sitting in get, as well as in the upper grades. That's really the dominant model. Tell and practice, right. sit and get sure. are synonymous. Mm -hmm. um, but when technologies just digitized that sit and get. And there's a, a concept called computer assisted instruction. Mm -hmm. CAI sure. is the dominant uh, form of computer technology in education right now is computer assisted instruction where students get content from a, a, a computer screen, whether it's a video game or, or uh, some gaming experience or some practice or even some video tutorials. They're right. still just consuming information. Mm -hmm. That's it. They're just consuming it in a digital format rather than in an analog format. Sure. And the average has remained steady at 0.34. So while the uh, upper grade level students have more background knowledge, they, they're able to, um, they have more experience learning, their system of education still privileges surface learning and practicing that surface learning. Sure. That is the dominant pedagogical model. And so my my clarion call to action is to disrupt that, yes. disrupt that with actual evidence. So the, in my framework, I call it the T3 framework. Let's talk about that a little bit. because yes. yeah, yeah. T3 is an acronym that stands for the three domains of technology impact in our schools. Mm -hmm. The first is translational. 
And I just described that. Mm-hmm. Right. Translational technology use is when you simply digitize the tell and practice model. Right? The two elements that I have uh, defined are automation and consumption in that first domain mm-hmm. where teachers and learners automate tasks. Teachers automate budgeting. They automate their their presentation. They videotape themselves. Uh, they they uh, communicate. They use email. They use word processing. Those are all powerful ways to automate tasks, and that adds value. Mm-hmm. The value clearly is in efficiencies, uh, saving time, and reducing errors. And okay. that's not to say that value is trivial. It isn't. But we mustn't stop there. Right. And all, all too often, school systems stop at that low level. The second um, element I call consumption, and that's where students and teachers consume blogs, videos, um, web-based information, e-books, e-magazines, uh, and then they consume digital information. It, it certainly adds access to a wider range of information than a textbook or other analog sources, but it's still just consuming information. So I define translational technology use as the kind of technology use in education where the task is not substantively changed, nor is the learner substantively changed by engaging in that task. The okay. value comes in adding efficiencies, reducing errors, and saving time. Okay. And you can, you can just think of all the different ways that you know, teachers are using technology. I want that to be a lens to say, okay, is this technology indicative of translational? If so, how can I move it to the next step? Mm-hmm. And that I call transformational technology use. Mm-hmm. The, the, the strategies in my second domain, transformational technology use, are those strategies which enact a substantive change on the learner's cognizance, their consciousness, their knowledge base, and also the task itself. So the learner becomes, in effect, their own learning sensei. Sure. The most powerful um, expression of mastery comes from a learner when the mastery learners become their own teachers. Mm -hmm. They self-regulate, they engage in feedback mechanisms, they set uh, goals and and intentions to themselves, and they monitor and regulate their effort, their progress, and their feelings at each stage of learning, whether it's surface learning, deeper learning, or knowledge transfer. And they also produce representations of their knowledge that are digitized. That's critical. When a learner becomes a producer, they're no longer simple consumers. They're producers of a representation of what they know, what they can do, and how they think about it. And I call that production. So in the T2, transformational technology domain, the two elements are production and contribution. Right. Okay. So to, to take that production a bit further and turn it into the contribution, right. that's when students create um, digital products, not to demonstrate what they know for the teacher, but to teach others what they know. Kids teaching kids is historically uh, embedded in our understanding of best practices research. The jigsaw activity, which is an activity that has a very high effect size at all three stages of learning, surface deep and knowledge transfer. The reason why that's so powerful is because we learn. Uh-oh. And we, we use technologies to represent uh, uh, ways to teach others what we know. And that's transformational. So I'm, I'm gonna, I need to pause you right there. So we, we had a weird glitch <laughs> there. And so oh. I just wanted that, that last little bit. Um, okay. As you yes. were, as you were getting, as you were first getting into the contribution, kind of cover sure. that back over again. I will. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. yeah. No worries. Um, so to take the production uh, phase and go yeah. a step higher is contribution, and that occurs when students produce knowledge products to teach someone else what they now know. And the research is really clear that when we engage in knowledge transfer, when we apply our learning in a context that's very different than the learning context, the context which we learned the the content, that is our ability to apply that knowledge, and then it'll become deeply consolidated. Then it'll be part of our permanent memory. Any teacher worth their salt knows that we learn the most when we teach. Yes. Yes. Teaching is a fundamental element of learning. So in my book, I, I call for teachers to invite students 
to set their own mastery goals, monitor themselves, but also then teach others what they know and in a sense become their own learning senseis, mm -hmm. yeah. their yeah. own learning teachers. And that's the effect size of those strategies when they're all, all six strategies in, in, the, in the T2 domain are implemented with reasonable fidelity. Um, one can expect an effect size of 1.6. Wow. Remember wow. the the average. Wow. Yeah, four. I know. Yeah, right. So yeah, yeah, point three four at one point six is a an enormous effect size, and that was observed by uh, my other mentor, Dr. Robert Marzano, uh, in his study of uh, uh, impact of technology. S students whose teachers engaged in these strategies outperform the kids in the control group by an extraordinary amount, and yeah, the effect huge. one point six. <laughs> Yeah, to put it in, in some equivalency terms, an effect size of 1.6 is equivalent to an additional three or four years of academic achievement in a single year. Wow, that is huge. That's yeah, absolutely yeah. huge. It's huge. And, and it, another way of looking at it is it'll take students less time to master current learning content. Instead of taking three or four weeks to master something, it might take a child one or two. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, that's remarkable. That, That's that is amazing. a level of efficiency that, that we really need to explore and implement. And people that are doing it are having ex tremendous success. So, okay. So that is, and that's just the transformational stage. Yeah. So yeah. if, so the impact of the transformational stage is now 1.6. Yeah. What on earth happens at the next phase when we get to <laughs> transcendental? Where do we go next? <laughs> we go to 11. That's when we turn yeah, it to 11. That's right. Turn it to <laughs> exactly 11. That's right. Uh, well, you know, it's funny, Dave. Uh, the, um, we have to go back to the original purpose of education. We have to continually ask, what is the purpose of education? That's the only way we can build what Hattie calls collective efficacy, where mm -hmm. everyone in an organization is moving forward and believing that the strategies that they're, they're developing, their own capacity building, is having a positive impact on learning. You know, that's how you build collective efficacy. But the purpose of education, I argue, is twofold. We have to scaffold learning in such a way that students master current learning content, mm -hmm. math, English language arts, science, social studies, civics, art, music. How can we help kids master learning right here, right now? That's what I call current learning readiness leading to current learning mastery. Okay. We have to do that. It is absolutely a, a, a um, critical element of uh, the purpose of education, but it's insufficient. Mm -hmm. It's insufficient because the second part of the purpose of education is to prepare kids for future learning mastery, yes. to master future learning problems and be able to address those problems with a level of mastery and apply or transfer all their accumulated knowledge, which we call wisdom, into solving wicked problems that matter to them. Right. And so that's where that's the next level. You know, transformational technology use, uh, as I define it, helps students master current learning the next level I call transcendent technology use. Okay. That's the kind of technology use that goes well above and beyond uh, the expectations of education uh, currently and the limitations of an industrial model of education and prepare kids for, it prepares kids for a future of learning, which will certainly be high, more highly globalized mm -hmm. and, and more technologized than any other generation of learners ever seen. So transcendent yeah. technologies, the way I define it, it, it helps kids uh, go above and beyond the uh, limitations of current learning and prepare them, really prepare them for the future. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Uh, future how problem do I, solvers. Future problem solvers. Now, how did I come up with a strat with strategies for future learning? I went back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You got to go back. You got to go to the classics. You know, what we know about science and the uh, scientific method and inquiry methods date back thousands of years. You know, this, these are ancient wisdoms of how we identify problems, we um, structure those problems, we identify the constraints, we investigate those problems, we investigate what's known about those problems, and then engage in hypothesizing so that we generate resolutions to those problems mm -hmm. in a way that is based on, grounded in knowledge and understanding so that, the, so that learners can make a contribution to improving their world. Okay, yes. You know, and that's transcendent. So the two elements in transcendent technology use, as I define it, are inquiry design and social entrepreneurship. 
cool. Let me, let me break those down a little bit. Yeah, Inquiry yeah. design, you know, because well, I'm a science teacher, you know, and, and I think for, for, um, for many progressive science teachers, the focus wasn't on having kids memorize stuff or, or do cookie cutter recipes of laboratory analyses that we know are well defined. We know what the solution is. Right. I mean, there's only so many times you can grow mold on bread and figure out that, yeah, if I wet bread and put it in, the, in a dark place, it's going to grow mold. Right, right. right. But in, I'm, I'm being you know, sarcastic uh, intentionally. But so much of science is not about just repeating known laboratory analyses, but setting off new on new pathways, new exploratory avenues of inquiry where we're interested in a problem. So we we want to solve that problem to make a significant contribution to the knowledge base. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So anybody that's done a master's degree knows what I'm talking about. Anyone that's done a, a capstone project or a doctoral thesis knows what I'm talking about. Cause mm -hmm. that's, that's the process of a, that's the thesis process. Sure. Yeah. My question then to our, to our viewers is why are we waiting so long? Why right. do we wait if somebody's getting a doctorate or a master's to tell them you can yes. engage in yes. design right. and yes. make a significant Exactly. Yes, yes. So I'm working with schools where kindergartners are making significant contribution to their community um, and doing it in a way that's meaningful to them and allowing them to apply their knowledge uh, in ways that are improving their world. Okay, so that is awesome. As we, we're, we're starting to run out of time, but i got to get some questions in. Sure. How, how so activities prompts? How do you get teachers into this? How do you what What's the steps of working through? Because we've got two phases of of the, the first. We got six phases in the middle. Yeah. So yeah. how does that? What's the timeline look like? What, what's it What's it like? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that, Jeff. Um, I've developed a process to help people um, integrate these um, steps and scaffold the process for whole school and the steps. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, in fact, I've started um, a process where individual teachers can earn micro credentialing and badging at nice. each of those steps. Nice. But it has to start at the beginning. Yeah. You know, a journey is a journey. Before we can play guitar like Eddie Van Halen, we've got to sit around the campfire playing Country Roads, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> and learn those great tunes. And then we've got to learn to play like Chuck Berry and learn all those rock and roll tunes. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I elaborate on this metaphor in my book. Yeah. But we need to go through these stages uh, before we can get to the highest level. So what I'm uh, helping teachers do is earn micro-credentialing and badging at each phase of, of the T3 framework. T1 innovation, uh, which is translational technologies, T2 innovation, which is transformational, and T3 transcendent. When teachers implement those strategies, try them, um, implement them, evaluate the evidence, and then they'll, in this coursework that I have uh, developed at, through a company called participate.com, mm -hmm. teachers can earn a badge uh, for, for uh, implementing those strategies. When they do the transformational work and do it with fidelity, they're going to get a lot more time in their instructional day. <clears throat> right. So you got to do that first. If, you, if it takes a child half the amount of time to master something, Instead of learning, instead of taking four weeks to master a concept, it's going to take them two weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, now you've got more time to do the transcendent work. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, do it really sequentially. And do what I call engaging wicked problem Fridays, where starting off <clears throat> one day a week, you know, kids uh, can focus on that wicked problem that matters to them. I then identify it, investigate it, hypothesize, and then <clears throat> do that social entrepreneurship work where they're actually creating some digital application or platform or uh, uh, awareness raising experience using digital tools to, mm -hmm. to improve their world. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. That's so you got to do it sequentially. And then uh, also there's a, uh, an opportunity now for um, whole schools to be certified at each level in the framework. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, I, I, and I love that you are bringing in those real world applications to, yeah. you know, those students. What what are the big nasty? What, what's the big nasty problem that yeah. you're facing? And let's mm -hmm. break it down and yeah. figure out the solution, mm -hmm. but do it in a manner that is actually yeah, sure. learning, yeah. teaching. Because they're all going to be different for different schools. Exactly. Right. Different kids, be. different kids <clears throat> across the spectrum. Sure. Yeah. Poverty right now, to wealth. The, yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm in, in fact, I'm in a school right now. I'm in a wonderful school <clears throat> called the Lemon Grove Academy in uh, Southern California. Mm -hmm. And this is a school that serves highly disenfranchised learners. Um, they, um, uh, these kids have just about every socioeconomic woe you can imagine befall them. And I, we've been working with the school. They've, they've mastered 
transformational technology use. And so w- one of the things, reasons I'm doing I'm here is to certify their achievement at the T3 level. Mm-hmm. And one of the one of the projects that fourth graders decided, which is really kind of timely and beautiful, they realized that um, there were a lot of kids that are lonely, that have some emotional challenges, sure. uh, they have traumas that, that, that affect them in their daily lives, and they wanted to promote a culture of kindness. This is particularly poignant given the recent uh, tragic events that sure. befall our country on sure. a daily basis, yeah. yes. uh, recent events, on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And these kids in fourth grade said, you know, we want to promote kindness and mindfulness. So they did a project on kindness and and did, that was their wicked problem. How can we make our school a kinder place to be, yeah. where kids feel content and peaceful and uh, engage in mindfulness? And they they researched the project process. They, with my help and the teacher's help, they scaffolded the process and they came up with a solution, which is called a buddy bench. And I'd never heard about this, but they they found out about it and they raised funds and wrote letters and got stakeholders involved, did presentations to their their teachers, their parents, the school board, the community. They raised the funds and now there's a buddy bench. And the the the, the trick is that if any if ever a child ever anytime a child feels lonely or they feel upset or they're sad or they need a buddy to talk to, they sit on this bench yeah. and it's a safe way for kids to say, Hey, I need some help. support. I need a buddy yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And oh. They've just unveiled it. That was the wicked problem that matters to them in yeah. fourth grade. That's transcending. You know? Amazing. You know that's, that's, amazing. that's mm-hmm. transcending what it started out as. That's, yeah. that's really amazing. Oh. So, yeah, so um, I, I've yes. got to wrap us up because we've got another interview waiting in the wings. Okay. But uh, this summer, so where can we find you? Where are you going to be at if, yeah. if our listeners would like to come and find you and shake your hand and sit down and talk with you? Thank you for, for asking that, Jeff. I'll be at ISTE in Chicago, um, and I'll be presenting a paper that I just wrote uh, with John Hattie's endorsement on mm-hmm. aligning visible learning and the T3 framework, and he just wrote a lovely endorsement. Um, I'll also be with John Hattie in Chicago again in July at the annual Visible Learning Conference. We'll be uh, promoting mm-hmm. that paper. I'm, uh, I'll also I wrote a uh, paper with the wonderful folks at Cisco Education, so I'll be presenting this uh, paper on organizational change management using the T3 framework at Cisco at ISTE, uh, so uh, be in Chicago twice. Uh, and then... Um, uh, I'll um, you find me online at MaganiEdgeEducation.com, and the coursework on T3 will be available on Participate.com later on this summer. Awesome. That well is the- fantastic. Awesome. And we're going to talk again, trust me. I'd um, love to. I, I feel like we, we need to do at least three episodes and break down each t- each part of the T3 because we could talk yes. a lot more about each part, and it yes. would be a lot of fun to get into I'll some meat. Get there. into some meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would great. love to. Yeah, awesome. I'd be an, it'd be a privilege. Thank you very much, Jeff and Dave. I really appreciate it. Thanks yes, everybody. sir. Thank you very much. Dr. Sonny Magana, Magana, Magana with us um, <laughs> on the show, and uh, we'll talk to you really soon. Thank you very much, Jeff and Dave. Really a pleasure. Cheers. We want to thank Dr. Sonny Magana for uh, sitting down and chatting with us again. It was great to uh, meet up with him and uh, kind of get a little deeper into uh, T3. And, uh, and as you had mentioned, uh, I really I think it'd be great to uh, – kind of do a, a series on his T3 research. Oh, yeah. And we could do a show on each one of them. Yeah. Because yeah. it's so in-depth. And, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it just makes a lot of sense to go into them that deep. But, yeah, we want to thank him again for coming on the show. Looking forward to seeing him at ISTE. Yeah. We'll see him again next uh, February, January, and uh, in, at FETC and probably before then also. Probably so. I, I'm really looking forward to uh, – I've been uh, hearing from – Several of our listeners and and several of uh, our our friends and folks that we know that uh, they're all going to be at uh, ISTE up in Chicago. So really looking forward to reconnecting with uh, some folks we haven't seen in a while and some folks that have been on the show. But, you know, it's been a while. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can sit down and kind of have a little powwow chat and just uh, hang out. Yeah, be pretty cool. Be a lot of fun. So um, guess what time it is? It's time for another East Initiative update right here on the Edge of Tech, guys. Let's take a listen to their update, and we'll be right back after this. Hi there. I'm Jerry Prince with the East Update. EAST is about learning opportunities that come along when a problem is introduced to a student. The Arkansas State Police Foundation had a problem. Their website was outdated. The foundation went in search of a solution and found that solution in an EAST student at Malvern High School. At a recent unveiling of the new site, 
With the Arkansas State Police Foundation's Board of Directors, Dr. Johnny Roebuck stated that the website's purpose was to reinforce the needs of the foundation. So you're going to see, as we demonstrate to you, you're going to see that we are in need constantly of donations. And so we ask you to stay with us, to know what we're doing. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're everywhere. But we just are constantly asking for citizens to help us because these troopers are out there every day. Uh, with their lives on the line for you. And they run too danger when we run away. So that's what, that's what we're all about. The webmaster is Caitlin. She is entering her sophomore year at Malvern High School. She worked with Dr. Roebuck and the foundation to create a fresher presence on the web with the new website, providing information to those wishing to learn more and support the foundation. Dr. Roebuck summarized the foundation's goal, supporting the state troopers and families around the state. The foundation is the reason that, that they're able to do some things that perhaps they would not be able to do. You can see Caitlin's work and find out more about the Arkansas State Police Foundation by visiting ASPFoundation.com. ASPFoundation.com. If you're interested in knowing more about the EAST Initiative, please visit EastInitiative.org or just search for EAST Initiative on social media. Our music today is Nightmare from Kyle, a student at Marshall High School. With the East Update, I'm Jerry Prince. Thanks for listening. We want to thank the folks from East Initiative for bringing us that update and uh, letting us hear some music from their students out at the East programs and what's going on with the East Initiative over the summer and coming up in the fall. Yeah. Hey, and remember, tonight is your last chance, midnight tonight, to register for our Badge Summit registration giveaway. $139 value. Go to giveaways.edutechguys.com. Sign up if you win. It's a free registration to June 23rd in Chicago, the day before ISTE at Columbia College, right there in Chicago. It's going to be a fun day. going to be a lot of sessions. You're going to learn a lot about badging and micro-credentials. Um, don't miss it. So head out to the giveaways.edutechguys.com and register. That's right. What's an, uh, that's, that is an awesome way to spend the day before ISTE kicks off. You're already going to be there anyway. Right. Why not enter to win uh, a free registration to the uh, Badge Summit? Yeah, and that includes breakfast and lunch and, you know, all the good stuff that's going to be going on there. You know, there'll be some, some good tchotchke to pick up, and you know, you're going to learn a lot. That's the really interesting part. You're going to learn a whole lot that's going on there. So, yeah, it's been a great show today. Awesome show, man. We had a, had a lot of fun. Yeah. And great interview with uh, Dr. Magana. Yeah. Hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. We'll catch you next time. Do 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 do. Manamanan. You've been listening to EduTech Guys Radio. Radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on this site, this program, for those of participants, is not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency.